transcribed. The Chicago Theater of the Air. by Robert Trendler, Mutual presents radio's greatest hour of music and drama, the famous Chicago Theater of the Air. Tonight's production, Mademoiselle Modiste, by Victor Herbert, starring Nancy Carr and John Carter, supported by Donald Graham, Earl Wilkie, and the Chicago Theater of the Air Chorus, featuring Muriel Bremner in the dramatic role of P.T. Ladies and gentlemen, the first few minutes of this hour will be devoted... on tonight's Chicago Theater of the Air production of the Victor Herbert operetta favorite, Mademoiselle Modiste, starring Nancy Carr and John Carter, supported by Donald Graham and Earl Wilkie, and featuring Muriel Bremner in the dramatic role of Fifi. Mademoiselle Modiste. To you, I say bonjour. I am Mademoiselle Fifi. Sometimes I'm what they call Mademoiselle Modiste, for I'm employed in a most exclusive millinery shop in Old Paris. Sometimes I'm very lonesome, for very seldom do I see a man in this shop. Alas, it's too frilly and lacy for men. 
everywhere there are furs and feathers. very happy, I suppose. But I'm not really happy. Always I've studied singing and, and always I dream that someday my opportunity will come. And then I will go on the stage. The stage. Oh. If I were asked to play the part a simple maiden like a palm a village last in country glow as to and from her work she goes, I'd sing a merry little strain, and gaily dance to this refrain. On the pair of feet to the I would dance, I would sing, I would be the rage on the pair of stage, there before the footlights bright, I would try troop have elected a mascot. A mascot? We, oui. the most beautiful mademoiselle in Paris. We have elected you, Fifi. Me? You have elected me as your mascot? Well, I, I, I hardly know what to say, Lieutenant, um, uh, Lieutenant... Uh, de Bouvray. Etienne de Bouvray. Come then, a toast to Mademoiselle Maudit, the mascot of our troop. <laughs>
This is a great honor, but if the owner of the shop were to find you here, there would be great trouble. Madame Cecile would not like this service the ceremony here. Mademoiselle Fifite, you are right. Now that I have found the girl, I must find the proper time and place for... For... For, uh, for what, Lieutenant? Do you not know what I'm thinking, Fifite? I, uh... We... Perhaps I do, If you bid, if silly or stupid, or if a little rascal cannot be, for loving and wooing are all of his doing, and yet he makes it painful as can be. He mixes the stations, he changes relations, for all your little schemes he sets a snare. And though you have planned it, and both understand it, he'll fix it so your sweetheart is not and deliver. 
deliver it to this here address. You, uh, you want me to, to, to deliver it personally, monsieur? Sure do. Here, I'll write this note and stick it in the box. That'll tell you where to take it. Very well, monsieur. Then I'll be very happy to deliver it for you. All I got to say is Agatha should see me now. Old Hiram Bent of Keokuk mixed up in a female hat shop. Uh, may I ask uh, who is Agatha? Aggie? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Aggie. She's my wife. Sent me over here to lap up some of that Paris culture she's always yelping about. Well, Paris is noted for culture, you know. Hold on there, gal. Don't you go starting that stuff, too. I ain't heard nothing but culture ever since I married Aggie. Got it on her brain, she has. She even started a culture club in Keokuk. Your wife must be a remarkable woman. Is she not? Remarkable? <laughs> She's the cat, that's what she is. And that culture club of hers is the cat's pajamas. Ah, uh, this America, it must be a wonderful place. Even culture for pussycats. There are folks who have a notion that they got across the ocean. If in search of atmosphere or inspiration. Well, I spent my time in seeing everything that's European. And their atmosphere has need of ventilation. There are sights you see in Paris that would fearfully embarrass anyone. You come and try it if you don't it. I am shocked a dozen times a day when I get back to Iowa. I'm going to tell our culture club about it. Our culture club is Keokuk. If you belong, you'd be in luck. Our meetings are exclusive and delightful. Oh, they're delightful. We've studied Kant and Schopenhauer and Bernard Shaw. We just devour. Although he does say something simply right. Simply right. We've argued politics and such in Greek and Spanish and in Dutch. In any language, taxes are the International bus, our culture club is the O'Cut And he's buying a hat for a girl in Paris. I wonder if Lieutenant... Indeed. Oh, oh, Lieutenant Etienne. Forgive me, Mademoiselle. I've been waiting for you to leave the shop. I wanted to see you alone. I'm glad you were. Why are you glad? I, um, I wanted to hear more about, uh, about... The time and the place? Mm hmm Pity, when the troop elected you mascot, I didn't realize that my heart needed a mascot, too. Etienne, wait... You, you think this is the time and the... Any time and any place, Fifi. If, if I were to kiss you, what would you say? I wonder... Fifi, please don't keep me guessing.
I must hurry. Where are you taking it? I'll go with you. I don't know. The address is in this envelope. I'll be your private chauffeur and we'll deliver it in style. <gasps> oh. Pippi, what is it? What's happened? At the end of this note. I don't know how to tell you, but I must go alone. All right, then. I'll wait here for you. No. No, Adrian, it's you. you. No. No, Adrian, it's you. I'm never coming I'm never coming. I'm never coming back to the shop. What? This is the one chance in all the world I've waited for. We must forget each other. But we must see. forget we must be ever made. Farewell. Then then it was just a dream after all. When I opened that envelope, I found that Monsieur Bent had addressed the hat to me. Not only that, but there were 5,000 francs in that envelope, too. <laughs> Vivi, this is our night, eh, Gail? Ah, oui, Monsieur Bent. Every night is our night. You're going to be a big star, Gail. You got the voice and the figure for the stage. And you got me to put you over. so much for me. Already I'm getting famous. Just the other day I auditioned for Grand Opera and they have accepted me as one of the company. Of course, in opera, everyone must have a dignified name, not frivolous like P.C. In opera, I'm called Madame Bellini and the critics are very kind to Madame Bellini. But sometimes I'm lonesome and I wonder what's become of my lieutenant. 
Uncle, I want to talk with you. Hey, fool. Bonjour, Etienne. What is it this time? More money? No. Uncle, have you ever been in love? Say no more, never you. I can read your mind. But, uh, but my boy, there's only one cure for an old love. A new one. No. I'll never find anyone like Titi. Nonsense. You'll find a prettier face or a prettier figure and boom, you'll forget everything else. Why don't you come with me to the charity bazaar? Hmm? Plenty of beautiful faces there and only 25 francs a kiss. I don't feel like joking, Uncle. I lost her to an American three times her age. Ah, oh, forget her. Love him and leave him, my boy. Dominate him. It's a man's world, Etienne. Man's world. I, I wish I could share your viewpoint, Uncle. Oh, fools may prate of the married state and the evils of bachelor life. I'm happy upon an American man are who are cursed with the shrew of a wife. I drink my fill if I have the will with friends who are tried and old. And oft when the company's good, I stay. I may not come home till the break of day. But if dinner is waiting and I am away, there is no one to nag me or scold. For I want what I want when I want you.
day, Uncle. Look at the prices on this booth. 300 francs for a single kiss. Isn't that rather high? I, not at all, my boy. Not for a kiss of Madame Bellini, the great opera star. All right. Madame Bellini it is. When I buy kisses, I want the best. Buy a kiss, Monsieur. A kiss for charity. Madame Bellini, I... That is, if it's for charity... Oh, of course, Monsieur. 300 francs for each kiss. It's all for... Oh, Etienne. Fifi, you... You are Madame Bellini. Uh-huh. Is it not a strange world? There was a time when Fifi's kisses were free for you alone. Do you remember, Etienne? Remember... How can I forget such a dream as ours? Only a I'm still waiting for her to be born. That's what I thought. That's just what I thought. You may pledge it up for the girl who is wise, a 
the girl who is shapely and fair. You may drink to the maid with the roguish blue eyes, or the queen with the raven black hair. There's the rollicking girl who's the toast of the crowd when the bright sparkling wine plays a part. But there's one name to sacred to men for all
Governor, sure some mighty strange critters wandering around my pasture tonight. Oh, hello, Uncle. You're wrong about women. I found the most wonderful one in the world. I found one too, my boy. Perfectly divine creature. No. You, Uncle? True, it's true. That stunny little unwanted nest at the Charity Bazaar. I couldn't afford to buy any more of her kisses, so I married the little rascal. Well, doggone my hide. If this here is culture, give me old Kia Kirkyle. Green Farmer Green. Starring Nancy Carr, John Carter, Earl Wilkie, and Donald Graham. Featured speaker was Colonel Robert R. McCormick, editor and publisher of the... Europe, Africa, and Asia have been reprinted in a single pamphlet called A Voyage to Three Continents. Available to you free by sending a card or letter to the Mutual Broadcasting System, Chicago 11, Illinois. Heard in synchronized speaking roles tonight, Muriel Bremner as B.B., Everett Clark as ATN, Maurice D. Copeland as Hiram Bent, and John Barkley as the uncle. This is Lee Bennett cordially inviting you to next week's Chicago Theater of the Air production, the Noel Coward operetta Bittersweet, starring Nancy Carr and David Polary, conducted by Henry Weber. This program was transcribed earlier. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>